half a century ago, the Soviet rulers commanded their subjects to be patient, bear privations, and make sacrifices for the sake of industrializing the country, promising that this was only temporary, that industrialization would bring them abundance, and Soviet progress would surpass the capitalistic West. Today, Soviet Russia is still unable to feed her people, while the rulers scramble to copy, borrow, or steal the technological achievements of the West. Industrialization is not a static goal. It is a dynamic process with a rapid rate of obsolescence. So the wretched serves of a planned tribal economy who starved while waiting for electric generators and tractors are now starving while waiting for atomic power and interplanetary travel. Thus, in a people's state, the progress of science is a threat to the people, and every advance is taken out of the people's shrinking height. This was not the history of capitalism. America's abundance was not created by public sacrifices to the common good, but by the productive genius of free men who pursued their own personal interests and the making of their own private fortunes. They they did not starve the people to pay for America's industrialization. They gave the people better jobs, higher wages, and cheaper goods with every new machine they invented, with every scientific discovery or technological advance. And thus the whole country was moving forward and profiting, not suffering every step of the way. Do not, however, make the error of reversing cause and effect. The good of the country was made possible precisely by the fact that it was not forced on anyone as a moral goal or duty. It was merely an effect. The cause was a man's right to pursue his own good. It is this right, not its consequences, that represents the moral justification of capitalism. But this right is incompatible with the intrinsic or the subjective theory of values, with the altruist morality and the tribal premise. It is obvious which human attribute one rejects when one rejects objectivity. And in view of capitalism's record, it is obvious against which human attribute the altruist morality and the tribal premise stand united. Against man's mind, against intelligence, particularly against intelligence applied to the problems of human survival that is productive ability. While altruism seeks to rob intelligence of its rewards by asserting that the moral duty of the competent is to serve the incompetent and sacrifice themselves to anyone's need, the tribal premise goes a step further. It denies the existence of intelligence and of its role in the production of wealth. It is morally obscene to regard wealth as an anonymous tribal product and to talk about re redistributing it. The view... The view that wealth is the result 
of some undifferentiated collective process that we all did something and it's impossible to tell who did what, therefore some sort of equalitarian distribution is necessary, might have been appropriate in the primordial jungle with a savage horde moving boulders by crude physical labor, though even there someone had to initiate and organize the moving. To hold that view in an industrial society where individual achievements are a matter of public record is so crass an evasion that even to give it the benefit of the doubt is an obscenity. Observe how seldom and how inadequately the issue of human intelligence is discussed in the writings of the tribal status altruist theoreticians. Observe how carefully today's advocates of a mixed economy avoid and evade any mention of intelligence or ability in their approach to political economic issues in their claims, demands, and pressure group warfare over the looting of the, quote, total social product, close quote. It is often asked, why was capitalism destroyed in spite of its incomparably beneficent record? The answer lies in the realm of philosophy. Capitalism could not survive in a culture dominated by mysticism and altruism. No social system and no human institution or activity of any kind can survive without a moral base. On the basis of the altruist morality, capitalism had to be and was them from the start. The guiltiest men today are not the collectivists. The guiltiest men are those who, lacking the courage to challenge mysticism and altruism, attempt to bypass the issues of reason and morality, and attempt to defend the only rational and moral system in mankind's history, capitalism on any grounds other than rational and moral. Thank you. Thank you.